This episode of Scarifier brought to you by Morbidly Beautiful, your home for horror. Hey, this is Rick with 13X Studios, and you are now listening to Scarifier. <laughs> All right, you psychos, welcome back to Scarifier. I am the Ace. I am the Gov. And I'm Quinn. And today we have a very special guest with us. Quinn, tell us who we got in the house that psychos built. All right, guys, we got a special treat for you today because today we are talking of the man behind 13X Studios, Rick Stazinski. Hey, Rick. Hey, you got it right. I was actually taking back I, in my mind that you were going to butcher my name. I'm not going right. I'm not going to lie. I held my breath like trying to pronounce it. I'm like, "Don't fuck this up. Don't you wow. fuck this up." We <laughs> had money on Quinn that she was going to mess it up, so we yes. just lost. I'm, I'm glad everyone had faith in me. I just want to put that out yes. there. You did wonderful. I appreciate it. <laughs> I passed. I'm good. I'm good though. Thank you guys for having me on, truly. So, yeah, uh, you're in Florida, correct? I am in St. Augustine, Florida, my little rundown. I'm from Troy, New York, the 518, and I moved to Orlando, and I was in Orlando for 20 years, and then me and my wife just moved to St. Augustine, Florida, which is the oldest city in the United States, um, back in September, and it's fantastic here. Oh, wow. Very cool. I'm yeah. jealous. <laughs> yes, I, I'm yes. jealous. Uh, it's been a long winter up here. Yeah, that's what I don't miss, basically. <laughs> no, no you like. However, my family's there, so it's you know, you, you listen, you know, you got to take the good with the bad. So, were you? Of course. So here's an odd question for you: Do you know where um, Lakeland, Florida, is? I do. That's where I was born. Wow. Um, the Publix. My wife works for Publix, and that's the main corporate headquarters is in Lakeland, Florida. So when I was I when I was really little, I got to actually tour that factory. That was really cool growing up. I actually miss that spot. I miss Publix. Super cool. <laughs> I would like to make you guys even a little more jealous. Um, I just it's my friend's birthday today, and we are having a party downtown St. Augustine tonight. But I just went to lunch with a few of us at Bill Murray's restaurant, which is Caddyshack. Which oh, is that's amazing. awesome. <laughs> yes. That's amazing. <laughs> if anyone knows me, I am the biggest Bill Murray fan in the world. Like, I, I'm being honest with you. Like, there's there's no bigger fan. I just love the guy to death, so. That's the fact, Jack! Um, do you want to go ahead and uh, let our listeners, like, know a little bit, like, about your um, company, just in case they're not familiar with it or Sure, anything? yeah, definitely. Um, I... Basically, four years ago, which was um, November November thirteenth, four years ago, um, I after I'm a basically a little background in my life. Um, I've been in the bar business. I played poker for a living, and I also DJed. So they're the three main things that I had on my resume. And pretty much, I'm a huge Halloween buff, and I love Halloween. So I, randomly, after Halloween four years ago, I told my wife, I said I wanted to get involved in something with like maybe conventions and something so and i love obviously i dress as jason a lot so i'm like you know maybe i'll do like friday 13th outfits and i'll make some masks and i'll put an outfit together and you know maybe i'll start selling them so i went to some thrift stores and i bought some different outfits and then you know i had some mask and i'm like man this is a lot of work for people that just want to buy like an outfit and how many people are going to buy them so i said okay bad idea and then randomly i was just staring at the mask and i'm like man i'm so creative i was like i could do some stuff with that mask so i decided to you know make a couple masks here and there and about two weeks later i put some on etsy and two weeks later i was at universal studios with the wife and i remember getting my first sale and she even had tears she's like i'm so proud of you you know and i said wow now that i sold one my birthday's in february and this is back in november like early december and i said my goal now is to sell 12 masks by my birthday Fast forward to my birthday, and I sold 50 masks. Oh, wow. Oh, there you go. Fast, fast forward four years ago, or four years later, and I'm well over. I've made 30,000 different style masks that I've sold, oh but God. I'm definitely over 50,000 masks I've sold. Oh, man. That's... <laughs> it, it blew up like you don't... I, I can't even tell you how, when, any, it just blew up. And I'm with, like, basically in a nutshell, I'm with 
Um, I have nine retail stores, including Nightmare Toys in Las Vegas, which they're probably the biggest horror toy store in the United States. And I got exclusive deal with Kevin Smith, and I make a silent Bob mask, and that has been going absolutely crazy. So um, that's how my popularity kind of got big, was Kevin started tweeting about me here and there, and then I saw my Instagram followers go from like, you know, 300 to 2,000 to 5,000, I have like 30,000 something now, so. So, like, you mentioned that you're a horror buff. I mean, was that something that was when you were younger? Did you kind of like stumble into it? You know, I just, my whole life, I've been a real big movie buff. And my dream was always to be like, I said, I want to be a director. I'm like, just great with people, you know, being in like, you know, the bar business, DJ business. I'm just really good around everyone. I'm like, I will be, everyone says I'd be like the best producer. I'm like, no, I want to direct. I want to like, I I just, I'm very passionate about things. So I'm like, if I put a movie together, I will be so passionate. I will kill it. And that was the goal. And I did a lot of short films. I did like seven short films and I got in some film festivals and stuff. And then. I don't know that I kind of just grew apart from it and then pretty much like just yeah just growing up like I but I've always loved horror though I've loved movies but I just always loved horror I'm a huge like my number one if you go back in time like I'm a huge Tarantino guy so he's like my number one and I've always been a big Kevin Smith guy so fast forward to now it's been amazing but horror wise I've just always been a Friday 13th you know all the mains all like the the oldies, the 80s, the, the Nightmare on Elm Street, the, the Texas good ones. Chainsaw. Yeah, that's what I really, really loved. And then just my passion for horror has always been there. I um, went to, we have a uh, convention here in Orlando, um, Spooky Empire, and I went to Spooky probably eight years. And then I got, I did my first convention. And, and I, the little side story, um, when I started my business, I was so excited. After I sold all those masks in February, I said, I'm going to do Spooky Empire. I brought 100 masks. Um, I've known Kane Hodder for a long time because I was involved in um, Kane Hodder. I, I actually, when I do podcasts, some people don't know who these names I drop, so I will say who they are just in case people don't know. Um, Kane, Kane Hodder played Jason in, in 7, 8, 9, and Jason X, and Victor Crowley, and all the hatchets. You don't say. You don't say. You don't say. So I've known him from, a, I ran a film festival back in Kissimmee, like back in the day, and there was Weekend of Horrors, which was a big horror show. And I actually set up there and I met um, like Tom Savini and Kane Hodder and all these guys. So I just been kind of always stayed in touch with Kane. And yeah, just like pretty much fast forward to Spooky Empire. I sold my whole booth out. I brought a hundred masks with me, sold everything out. When I was leaving, I stopped in the middle of the road and Kane was standing in the middle of the road. Like he stopped my car. And I was like, all right, man, I'll see you soon. You know, blah, blah. And I said, I had a blast. We were partying all weekend. And he said, I remember you saying to me that you want to do this full time. I think you should. He goes, I love what you're doing. Oh, wow. That's awesome. So, yeah, when I drove away, I stopped the car and I told the wife, I said, I'm doing this full time for a living. And that's it. And I swear to God, I've never fucking looked back one time. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. No, but that's like really inspiring because it sounds like you were like really ambitious and determined and you just followed what you were passionate about. And it's you know, tenfold. I, I, you know, I'm one of those guys that, you know, especially being like, you know, I, I, I grew up a jock. I was really, you know, I played semi-pro baseball. I played basketball pretty much when I was younger. I was just a good athlete. So I always had that confidence in me. You know, a lot of people don't have that. And then DJing, and then I played poker for a living, like, you know, winning, you know, I, I don't want some money in tournaments. And you just like, you just walk taller. So I have that confidence. But I've always been, and I just, ever since I started this business, I've been so inspirational to so many people. If you know the messages that I've got from people where like just this random person will hit me up and they'll be like, you know what? You inspire me every day. I want to, I always was a pretty good singer. I'm going to just start doing it. So that makes me feel really good that I can kind of give that positive vibes and help people out and stuff like that. You know, I'm all for myself. My business is myself. I have no one. No one helps me. I don't do anything. I have someone that molds my masks and I do everything else. That's it. Oh, like wow. nobody helps me at all. So it's, I'm a one man show. So, you know, I don't want help. I want, this is all me. I don't want anybody else. Um, I did, I did pick up my first model very recently. And, um, so my first paying model for my business. So she's the first person on my payroll. So, um, her name's Aubrey Hayes. Check her out on Instagram. She's awesome. She's great. And, um, so, you know, I just kind of like, going for it and like i said if i'm inspirational on the way and helping people you know do their thing god bless you know that's what i'm trying to do 
So what sort of uh, clientele have you been seeing? Like, I'll, I'll be specific. Has Kane Hodder bought a Jason mask from you yet? Um, I mean, I'm so I do a lot of conventions. Um, I do um, Days of the Dead in Atlanta. I do Mad Monster in North Carolina. I do MegaCon Orlando. I do both Spooky Empires. I've done Dragon Con in Atlanta. So I'm kind of staying in the South right now. And so I, I've met everyone that you only know. I mean, just being friends with Kane. I mean, you know, when I'm with Kane, it's like you're in, you know, so you, you meet everybody and now you're part of the crew. So um, have I ever sold um, a mask to a celebrity? No, have they tried to buy from me? Yes, but I've gave the mask. So, um, I mean, a cane I'd probably hit, has like ten of my masks. So I like oh, to wow. make personal masks. Um, John uh, uh, Buchler, um from the director of Friday Thirteen Part Seven passed away, yeah. and Kane was very close to him. So I made a cancer mask for mm. Kane. So I try to do like, oh, wow. yeah. So like, usually I what I try to do at cons, I try to make, I try to find one or two celebrities that I want to make a mask of them, and then I'll get a sign. Then I usually give them a mask also. So my wall is awesome though. I'm looking at it right now. I have like. Everyone from Lou Ferrigno to Pee Wee Herman to Alice Cooper <laughs> to Robert oh, wow. Richard Dreyfus, um, uh, Dina from Jersey Shore. I oh have, um, yeah, uh, the Scream people. I got um, the Chucky uh, Child's Play people, Alex Vincent. I got all these guys. So they're all my people. I'm, I'm close with Tony Moran, who played uh, Michael Myers in Halloween 1. Oh, um, wow. close with Tamara Glenn, who played in Halloween 5. Um, they're my Tamara's my everyday. I talk to her all the time on the phone, and Tony's like one of our con hangouts. I love partying with these guys, and we were very close to Sid Haig when he passed away. I was broken for, for still to this day. So Sid Haig, who played Captain Spaulding in Devil's Rejects and yeah. House of Thousand Corpses, obviously you guys know, but other people listening, he was my, he was my wife. Like he loved my wife too. Like we just used to sit with him. Just I don't know. He was just just a great person. So I'm still kind of affected by that his death, but um. You know, just going with the flow. Um, so uh, how involved um, is Dawn in all of this? It sounds like she's a really awesome support system, but like how um, involved does she get in the business? So uh, me and my wife have been married for four years and I'm, I could talk loud. She's actually napping in the other room because we're like I said, we're going to party tonight. Um, she is. I, I swear to you, we, people always tell me they're jealous of me and my wife. And I always ask why. And they say, because the way you guys are, like the way you guys are together is just awesome. And I will say this, the one thing I'll brag about my wife, we've been together, we've been married for four years and I swear to you, and I, people are going to think this is a joke. We've never gotten in a fight. It's like, if I'm in like a mood and like, she just stays away and if she's in a mood, she's like, I stay away from her. It's like, we just know each other so good. So to my business, she just doesn't fuck with anything. She just, I do my thing. And she comes to cons and you know, everyone loves partying with her and hanging out. We have so many con friends. So she just kind of just chills and she loves the ride without a doubt. I mean, she, you know, she works at Publix and then she comes home and then she's just involved in my crazy life. But, you know, she just kind of lets me do my thing. And, and if I need help, like she helps me like bag stuff and things like that for like some of my, you know, my wholesale stuff. And um, like she will help me when I'm kind of desperate and be like, please help me. But um, no, she's down and she loves it. She loves every minute, single minute of it. And all the benefits, I mean, like, you know, we're we're going to Vegas soon and um, like right after Spooky Empire, like we go on vacation a lot. We don't have kids or anything. So we decided we're going that route of just uh, just kind of enjoy life and just kind of go with it, you know, so. That, I mean, that's did I answer your question? No, you, you <laughs> did. Don't worry. You did. Um, no, but that's really cool, you know, because it sounds like there is that balance that you don't really see a lot. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Well, thank God I'm not drunk like I was in Haunt Scene because I'd be saying, <laughs> fuck that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I want a divorce. <laughs> no, I'm just I'm just playing. But yeah, no, she's, um, uh, yeah, she she is, I mean, I can't ask for anybody that's, and she lets me like, she just like, I don't, it's just great, like the trust, like, I mean, like we have these two friends um, from Hansi Co, which they're a jewelry company. Um, uh, Ashley and Kira are my best friends, and and and, uh, and you know Dawn loves them. Like they love each other. And like, I went away with the girls for two weeks, and then we went to um, uh, North Carolina, Cherokee, North Carolina, for my birthday. Um, a Harris Casino. We were there for five days for my birthday. My wife didn't come because I didn't want her to burn all the vacation time where we can spend it on you know vacation. Right. And like she don't care. I'm with like two chicks, you know, two pot chicks. She don't care. Like she just the it's just great man it's just like our whole our whole thing we have is just amazing like it's it's all good you know I mean, it, it takes a lot in a relationship you know trust is trust and it's huge you know and yeah without a doubt you know and it's like she never even doubts anything
thing, you know. And listen, I mean, I'm in the business where, you know, in the horror business where, you know, it's probably not the hardest to, you know, to be a bad boy, but never, never would disrespect my wife or nothing, so. All right, the gov is going to tell you real quick how to bring the horror into your own home with a handmade soy wax candle from American Nightmare Candle Company. The scents are inspired by locations iconic to the horror genre, places like the Overlook Hotel, Sleepy Hollow, and Elm Street. Each fragrance combination is carefully curated to transport you into the story, and the catalog is ever-evolving. So head over to Etsy or to AmericanNightmareCandles.com and get 10% off when you use the code SCARIFIER at checkout. This deal only makes sense, so get your American Nightmare Candle today. Yeah, man, I, I want to tell you, like, the thing, like, you know, like I said, I, I can be as confident as I want about my business, but I built my brand where everyone fucking is going to know my name. Like, I mean, be honest with you, like, I think the biggest, the biggest con- horror convention is um, Texas Frightmare. And I know the second biggest is Monster Mania. And I'm being honest with you, the owner of Monster Mania hit me up and he's like, bro, I, I, we're going to open a store. I want your mass in my store. So he, like, my, the second biggest con, like, they, he buys from me all the time. And it's like, that's what's really cool is that like I'm already my name is just out there my that brand where they can actually charge more because my brand and you know all these people that I'm you know that I have all these deals so like you know Kane for instance like you know I have a deal with Kane where we make the Kane kill mask mm-hmm. and we did part seven we did part eight basically I take part seven and just put a fucking wicked spin on it and just do I did part seven red and it was we made a hundred limited edition of a hundred those shits sold out in a convention in like one day it was like wow so yeah so i'm just that's one thing like i am just building and building and building my name and then my big thing i'm, I'm super excited about is back in i'm gonna say i know you guys would probably bring this up but I'll, I'll start um two years ago at mad monster convention in north carolina um i was a huge terrifier fan love terrifier i think it was one of the best horror movies out agreed and yeah, <laughs> yeah. And now david uh david who plays art the clown i met him before so we actually got talking bullshit i'm like i really like this guy I made him an art mask and then he ended up him and damien the director came to mad monster north carolina and i ended up meeting damien and 10 minutes in it was like the bromance like everything we like all the same shit it was awesome so me and him became so close friends and he's like dude you're definitely gonna be in terrifier 2 and i'm like fuck yeah so i actually um can't wait i'm uh i went down shooting in new jersey i shot for five days um i have a couple lines which are fucking fantastic my name in the movie is called selfie guy and you know the <laughs> iconic yep the iconic selfie scene in the first one you know now it's me i gotta represent so here's the coolest thing though so i have a couple lines fucking badass my scene is great here's the kicker so damien just was like like damien never told me shit he's like yo just come to jersey you're gonna be in my movie and i had i I met someone at spooky empire that actually paid to be an extra in the movie because they had the um you know the indiegogo and so randomly this dude I met, he goes, yeah, I paid a thousand dollars to be an extra. I'm like, holy shit. So he kind of stayed in touch with me and he would always send me the emails that they sent out to everybody. Cause Damien never tells me shit. So what it said was that we're going to be in like a dance club Halloween night. So you have to wear like a generic Halloween outfit. And I'm like, fuck that shit, dude. I'm not wearing a fucking skeleton outfit. I'm not doing that. So <laughs> I said right away, I need to come up with an idea. And I thought the first idea was that me and Damien are huge, like Stallone guys. I love Rocky and he loves Rambo. And I'm like, I might do like the Rocky in the meat, you know, hitting the meat with the bloody hands and the hat and the oh, gray yeah. sweatshirt. I'm like, what a great costume to wear. So then I started thinking, I'm like, wait a minute, man. I'm hooked up with Kevin Smith. It's my fucking guy. I'm like, I got to do something with Kevin. So sure enough, man, I, I, it was so funny. I hit up Kevin's brother and said, listen, I, I, I want to see if I could wear a Clerks 2 movies outfit for, um, you know, this movie I'm going to be in. And he, and Kevin was right next to him. And Kevin said, absolutely. So, <laughs> oh, that's so <laughs> that's cool. cool. Now I go back to Damien. Damien's so excited. And then he sends me like the dreaded message, like, bro, is there any way could we get it in writing just in case, you know, and I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> so sure enough, I hit them up and within 24 hours, I had a signed contract with Kevin for uh, wearing my, I'm looking at it right now, it's on my wall. It's awesome. So I actually wear a, and they said the secret stash who I deal with, that's Jay and Silent Bob's secret stash. Yeah. Uh, my masks are in there. 
and they actually sent me the whole outfit and everything and I got to wear it and I fucking represent it, you know, Randall from Clerks 2 and um, yeah. I don't mind people snickering at the stupid uniform I've got to wear, but I'll be damned if I'm going to let some self-righteous lucky turd come in here and treat me and Dante like we're a couple of fucking Randall. So I, my whole goal was that after Terrifier 2 comes out, I want some Kevin Smith people to watch it and be like, is that fucking dude rocking a fucking, you know, movies outfit? So it's super, super, super cool. And to top that off, if you guys are Kevin, are you guys Kevin fans? Oh, yeah. Huge, huge. So, um, so I deal with Jay Muse's wife, Jordan, which is um, one of Kevin's producers. Um, I deal with Jordan a lot, and Jordan actually invited me and my wife to go to Movies Orlando because um, Kevin was going to be there. So, sure enough, we uh, they hooked us up, and um, this was a week, in a, uh, less than two weeks ago. Um, we actually went there for the first sitting for movies, and Kevin and his mom were there, and uh, we had great. So I, I, you know, I got some good pictures, and we got. Um, but me and Kevin had some good conversations about all my mass, and you know, and I'm being honest with you, I've sold out of his store um, close to 30 times so far. So they made a shitload of really? money on me too. Wow. Yeah, I mean, I just do it just because I fucking love Kevin Smith. But I mean, you know, I made so much money, and so have they. So we have such a great partnership, and it's wonderful. So. It's been uh, living the dream, man. Living the dream. So you're not kidding, man. Holy crap! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. And Dude, uh, every actually, day, yeah, every I, day something happens. Every day something new happens. I swear to God, if I was to tell you in the past probably 48 hours of things that are going to be happening, you'd just be like, "How is this happening?" Like I'm just, I don't. It just happens, you know. You just make moves and you talk to people and you just, you know, it's it's all good, you know. It's actually so. interesting. We uh, we just did a show with David Howard Thornton. He was on. Oh, he was on this podcast, and he's an amazing dude. Great guy. Yes. Um, the question I wanted to ask you: So, is it because you custom paint them? How do you do? You have some kind of uh, license agreement with like Paramount or whoever has the likeness to the Jason mask, or is it uh, considered independent? I, you know, I basically, I just went into it in the beginning and I found all of my information. I just, you know, make fan artwork. That's how I go by. Um, so the first store that I went in um, wholesale was um, Halloween Mega Store. They were the first company that went to me. Like they were the, they were from the very beginning, my first pretty much retail store. And they're big, man. They had 16 stores. Um, they have, um, now they have nine stores, but it's, I don't know if you guys are Jersey Shore fans. Yes. But whoever's, okay, great. Whoever's <laughs> Quinn is. <laughs> okay, that's okay. I'm a, I'm a huge Jersey Shore guy. Um, uh, Danny, who uh, actually, you know, gave the kids the house, they stayed in the house. He was the, the t-shirt guy and they worked for him and stuff. Um, Danny owns uh, this this place. So um, that was it. They um, I worked, you know, a deal out with them. And then I said, you know, I was getting nervous in the beginning. I was like, well, how are you guys going to market it? And they're like, dude, we're just we just put it in your label on it. And that's it. And all I do is just put Jason part three, Jason part four. I mean, I put my own twists and turns on everything anyway. So no one's going to say like, oh, my God, this is a Jason part three mask. Like right. there's you know, there's really not much you can do. Um, I don't use the Friday 13th name. I don't use any names when I do stuff like if I put you know, um, I'll just put like Captain Spaulding. I won't put Devil's Rejects. I'll just put Captain Spaulding. But I've only been nailed. Like, um, I mean, I, I had an issue with Wu Tang. Like, I'm a big Wu Tang fan, and um, I had an issue with the logo there, which is totally cool. And I had a logo with a uh, ghost, ghost face from Scream. So they were the only two, pretty much. And I'm like, you know, to be honest with you, on my Etsy store anyway, 90% of the stuff is just Jason style stuff. So. It's when I go to the cons though, it's 50 50. It's like people love seeing all the stuff. I mean, I have over 100 style of faces that I do at cons, and then and then I have, you know, 150 Jason style. So they have a good, ex but like if you go on my site right now, I probably have maybe 20, you know, faces on there. So I got a really odd question, but I can't uh -oh. help myself. So indulge me here. You make like the custom masks, right? Like, do people like yes. write into you and ask for things? Because my question is, what is like the weirdest one anyone has asked? I've just got to know. But before we dive into that, we feel now is the best time to tell you that Scarifier are proud supporters of Rue Morgue. Rue Morgue is the world's leading horror and culture and entertainment brand, spearheaded by its multiple award winning magazine, 
Rue Morgue, and Rue Morgue Digital. But if reading's not your thing, that's okay, because there's Rue Morgue TV, the official YouTube channel, as well as Rue Morgue Cinema, which produced the acclaimed original film The Last Will and Testament of Rosalind Lee. So head over to RueMorgue.com and subscribe to Rue Morgue Magazine for your bi-monthly slice of horror culture and entertainment today. Um, you know, I, I would say the weirdest one is someone asked me to make some kind of um, bondage type stuff. <laughs> wow. was, yeah, that was weird. It was for um, it was when um, uh, the gray Fifty Shades of Gray. It was that kind of time oh, frame. Oh Jesus! And I, to be honest with you, I just didn't really create anything. It was kind of like whack, and the person was kind of weird. And um, but I usually get like, I don't know. I really, I mean. I mean, th I'm being honest with you. I've done all the serial killer masks, and at one point, I started feeling that I was, I was like, when I, what I like to do is when I work, I like to pull up stuff on YouTube, and I like to like listen. Like, I love Howard Stern, so I listen. I, I go back to a lot of old Howard Stern shows, and just listen and work on my mask. But when I was doing the serial killer stuff, I was watching a lot of documentaries, and I'm like. I in, listen, dude. I have no filter, man. I, I trust me. I mean, you saw my hunts. <laughs> I don't we care. like it that way. Yeah, nothing offends me. <laughs> but I'm being honest with you. I feel that doing the serial killer mask was a little too much for me now, and this is why. I kind of was like, and I still, unfortunately, do the John Wayne Gacy pogo mask. But I'm like, man, I don't want to be at a con one day and some dude's gonna come up and be like, you know, fucking my uncle's fucking kid was killed by you know. I, I just, yeah. Real right. <laughs> I felt I, I just I, I'm not down. Someone asked me to make an Ed Gein mask, and I'm like, I just don't, really don't want to be involved. And I did Manson with the swastik, and mm. I sold them like crazy. And I'm like, you know what? We're in a world now that probably not the best thing to do. Right. So, right. Plus, I have a lot of kids that come in my mask and shit. But now on the flip side, um, I'm leaving you with a little terrifier too exclusive. Um, there's two masks in the movie in the dance club, and one of them is a pumpkin mask, and it says "slut" on it in bloody letters. <laughs> and I'm being honest with you. I sell the shit out of this mask. And then after it was in Terrifier 2, I'm like, I'm just going to wait till it comes out. And I'm going to make it like, you know, i market it like Terrifier 2 slut pumpkin mask. Like, <laughs> <you know. laughs> yeah, but no one really has made like no one's really asked me to make that crazy. Like, you know, like I said, after doing a swastik on a mask and what else is worse? Like, right. You know, can I get my Hitler mask now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, we say it's angry Jesus when anybody comes in. The movie, so. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. So, but anyway, no, I, I got rid of them. Like I said, I still do the pogo. I make it bloody and then non-bloody. And that's the only one because it's like the clown and people really collect like clown right. stuff. So I'm going to stay with that. But um, that's it pretty much. So So then here's a follow-up question. Would Give you... me some good ones. Give me some crazy <laughs> questions, man. Well, here's a good one. Now, nobody laugh, but here's a good one. Now, would you make a Hello a Kitty? Donald Trump mask? No. What? <laughs> 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 sorry, I'm not lying, but no, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. Would you make a Hello Kitty Jason mask? Okay, I, it's really funny. I have, it, I swear to you how things are so funny. I am looking right now at a Hello Kitty Jason mask right in front of me. Um, no, I, I want to tell you, I hear Hello Kitty's very, very strict with shit, so I don't put them on Etsy, but I've probably made fucking 500 of them already. I'm oh, just wow. going to take a quick note over here, guys. Don't mind me. Yeah, you're about to sell so, 500 so, one. I was about so, to say. <laughs> so I got one for you. And, uh, one yes. of the masks I saw um, on your Instagram that you know really struck a chord with me. I'm a huge Kiss fan, man. And I yes. saw your Gene Simmons. How have you avoided him <laughs> with the copyrights? You know, I didn't even. I didn't even put. I don't. I even Kiss in. I think I just. I don't even know what I did, but I think I. I had it on a frame. Or I did have it in a mask. I don't even know if I have one on there, but I know that was – I was always told that was a tough one too. But I'm being honest with you. I kind of just let it go until someone bought it. But And I think someone did buy it. Um, actually, no. I'm thinking about it now. Someone just bought the one on the frame the other day. So I won't put another one on there. I kind of played with fire with Kiss. I know we're tough. You know, there's a few companies that are pretty tough out there, but – um, like I said, 90% of my stuff is Jason stuff online, so um, I'll pop some stuff here and there. Like, now, you, I don't know if you know, but like, you know, Terrifier, Damien put a note out saying that you actually have to get, you know, permission uh, to do any kind of Terrifier stuff now. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So they can do the, they give you the letter, and, um, you know, so I, of course, got permission to do any art clown mask. So um, before we let you go, I did want to ask you what do you have planned for the future? Like, what future projects do you have coming up? Because I'm, excited about the stuff that I've seen from you so far and what I've heard 
what can we expect from um, I definitely you know I'm, I'm not an actor at all I don't want to be an actor um, but I, I really had a fun time being um, in Terrifier and um, you know I do have some hookups for some other movies that I can be involved in so I, that's definitely one thing I want to do but I also got a booking it's so funny I got a booking agent where um, after Terrifier 2 comes out um, he one of our guys uh, MME uh, Monster Memorabilia Entertainment he got a lot of the um uh, Terrifier two people. So, um, you know, so that I might be doing some conventions and stuff like that, which I listen, dude, I, I don't, I'm one of those people like, you know, for someone to pay for an autograph, I'm like, come on, man, I'll fucking sign. I don't give a shit, man. I'm like Kevin Smith. I, I went the Kevin Smith route. Kevin says like he signs for everyone. His autograph's never going to be worth money because he signs for everyone. It's like, I want to do that too. Like if it's happy, if you want a picture sign, God bless you. Take a picture. I don't care. Like, you know, I mean, I have a really good following and it's like, you know, a lot, obviously for my math, and like I got a lot of young kids so I try to be as positive as possible for the little guys right. and um you know and it's so adorable seeing like a little girl walking away with a misfits mask on like come on <laughs> man you know it's like it's adorable you know and I, and I love the kids and I always try to you know I always try to you know give something extra to the kids either a keychain or stuff I like to bring little stuff for them and and I love watching Kane Hodders the same way with the kids he's, he's just he's different around he gets drunk like me but on the flip <laughs> side he is so good with like anybody disabled or any kids he's so good with them and that's like that's my inspiration that i want to be that like him you know i want to do that to people too you know so um yeah so i'm, I'm gonna be doing um just uh you know just probably get a more retail i mean i could live make a living out of my retail right now if i want to but so i decided to cut a lot of cons out but i'm still going to do my main cons because i just you know my friends and everything con life is just like no other it's just a fun ride especially when you go away for like two weeks it's just crazy man living on the right. road and partying and just doing our thing and it's it's great man my 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 favorite thing about cons is when the first day i set up is i have all these visions how i want to make my booth and like i love doing it i the, the bad one is at the end when you have to take everything down you're like fuck you know but um I pretty much um, grew in booth size. I used to have these metal grid walls, and now I have like this wood grid wall, and it's so easy. It's one piece, and they just fold. And I just I have a banner. I have a Terrifier Two banner in my my own Thirteen X Studios banner. I'm gonna put on top of the table, and I have like these lanterns that I put around. So it's a very woodsy Friday Thirteenth feel in my booth. And I also have a wax burner that smells like um like forest. Oh, so nice. it kind of has That's that. Cool. Now I. I do want to say I haven't done it yet. I have it ready to go, but because people are wearing the mask, it's probably why I even do it. So I'm kind of just waiting for like the big con when masks aren't have to be worn, and then I can yeah. basically, you know, really hammer that out. And um, but yeah, so um, so I'm gonna be just going. For, I mean, just just little things like I said, every day like new gigs are coming up and like just new deals. And now that like you know, if Kevin Smith has a mask blah 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 wants a mask and this guy wants a mask now i'm going to be doing j mask now too for for kevin um cool. that's pretty cool yeah so that's good that's in the works and so everything just like i said i just take one day at a time and just go with it and um i have to throw this at you guys because i did it on a haunt scene and i have to throw it all right do you guys have oculus quest twos I don't even know what that is no. i'm not gonna oh lie to you. i'm so sad i'm <laughs> really just do you guys don't know are you clueless yeah I'm so All right, clueless. so anyone listening out there, I, this is my plug, my 20-second plug. Oculus Quest 2 is a device, I guess Facebook is behind it, and it's basically um, a virtual reality. You put it over your head. Oh, and wow. And it is, when I say life-changing, it is like, I, I've had it for three months, and I have... I spent almost $800 in games. These games are right to the headset, so you don't have to go out physically and buy them. Nice. But, like, my first game I got was Walking Dead, and it's hands down the greatest thing ever. Like, you, like it, it's real. Like, you're really grabbing a zombie and really stabbing. It's re it's really crazy. But what I'm getting at, there's a, a, a site in there called Alt Space, and what it is, it's just these people build worlds where your own world, you could build whatever, you could put anything you want in it. And I built three worlds already, and I've, I've established so much business from just my worlds. I have um, a 13X Studios um, VIP lounge. I have a 13X Studios street hoops where you can play hoop and stuff. And then I have a gallery. So I have three different things. And I have tons of pictures and interactive. You can play basketball. You can like shoot fireworks. It's the most amazing That's thing. Cool. So 
Now, you guys haven't heard this. Please, they're 300 bucks on Amazon. It's life changing, dude. You will, like, I'm telling you, it's amazing. I'm not a gamer either. That's what's really funny about it. But um, <laughs> so, anyone out there, definitely go for an Oculus Quest 2. Very cool. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much again, Rick, for taking the time and talking with us. We really appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate it. I, I'm sure I did 90% of the talking. My mouth sometimes <laughs> just goes and goes. That's and cool. I, I hope we got everything accomplished. At least we kind of got a little base down of, you know, what what my life's all about. And, well, but, I, will, I will say uh, we do probably have to do a follow-up uh, episode yes. where you are drunk. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that would be great, That's- man. Yeah, I mean, you know, I wouldn't mind doing a show maybe at when I'm at a con at night, and then maybe I can go around and pass the phone around and get you some people on. You oh, know, that'd be like, excellent. Set awesome. yeah, that up, yeah. Without a doubt, man. I at least say hi. You know, I can just pass my phone around to some of this, the horror celebs, and they can, you know, say what's up. So plug them, you know. It, it, so. it, it, it's just when you have the best con stories. Here I am. I'm, I was proud of myself for getting Malcolm McDowell to apologize for um, Rob Zombie's Halloween. And that's all I got. <laughs> that's <funny. laughs> no, that's good though. That's that is a uh, that's a great story. You know, we, we need to do one day, um, and I can tell you some of the celebrities from the um, from the cons. Like some of the stories I've had, like everything from like uh, I remember one day I was in one of my booths, and this guy comes in, and he just comes up to me and got in my face. Not like he's gonna fight me, but got really close, and he said these are fucking brilliant and just walked out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. D- D- it was D. Snyder from Twisted Sister. Oh, wow. Oh, my wow. God. So I, have, I have so many of these, like, um, the Saska sisters. Like, they fucking love my stuff. They wanted to buy a whole bunch of stuff, and I just gave them some masks. I'm like, they were cool. But, like, you mostly, like, when I'm setting up, a lot of the celebrities will come in the room, like, when we're setting up. So that's when you just, like, kind of meet people and bullshit with people. But I know mostly, you know, CJ Graham's a friend. Um, we're close with CJ's wife, Ruby. Um, uh, CJ was in, obviously, uh, Friday 13, Part 6. They're, mm-hmm. they're great people. And um, so we just kind of establish our relationships. It's a, I feel there's a lot of clicks and cons. You know, everybody has their people and just kind of um, – you know, that's how we go with it. But Kane has a big posse, man. You know, everybody's <laughs> Kane's the best to hang out with. Though. He's he, I, I love him to death. I can't wait to see him. There's actually he's going to be at a con um, in next weekend. Um, full moon tattoo convention in Tennessee. Uh, Bill Mosley is going to be there. I love Bill. Oh, cool. And um, Kane's going to be there. So um, and they always all these cons always put me right next to Kane. So, <laughs> oh, he, yeah, he fucks with me. Right. dude, he fucks with me all the time. Like, this is what <laughs> Kane does to me. This is the ongoing shit that Kane does. So basically, the celebrities are in an, another room than the vendor. So this is the only one they don't put me next to Kane. So Kane was in an autograph room. Um, my wife was at his table. Fucking, um, he had a couple other people in there, and I'm in a whole other room. So randomly, as my wife's walking by, he yells. He's like, "Dawn, come here!" <laughs> and um, and she's like, "What's up?" And he's like, "Where's Rick?" Rick, he just started screaming my name. He's like, "Rick, Rick!" And, <laughs> and Dawn's like, "Oh my god!" So now one of like the um the guys who helped the celebrities out like he's like yo you need to go get rick and then so now this guy's trying to go get me what's funny i actually had someone watch my booth as i went on a little break so my wife's going in trying to find uh, i have a friend in my booth so i just wanted to walk around for a little bit so now i got to scramble for kane's like looking for me there's something wrong so what already someone comes up and said dude you have to go see kane you have to see kane and um something's happened and right away i'm thinking like because we had a mask selling i'm like maybe someone stole one or something so i don't know so my wife's looking for me so i come in and right when i walk in the door kane's like red screaming and i'm like oh my god and everyone's turned around like there's gonna be either a fight or security's gonna come in or whatever and i go up i say kane what's wrong and he's like i just want to say hi <laughs> oh my god <laughs> and i'm like really like, this is what he does so me next to him every 10 minutes like when he does it like the like someone will come up to him and be like hey you know it's so nice to meet you you know would you sign this and kane's like yeah oh my god i love this painting it's so nice and then while he's signing he'll just look up and he'll be like Rick, he'll scream my name and the person like jumps they're like what the fuck and then everyone looks at me and i'm like oh my god i put my head down i'm like oh fuck. i don't know this wow. man yeah so he loves fucking with me man i swear to god so it's uh we have a, a great relationship, I, but I, I truly love the guy. He's an awesome dude. But yeah, one day we're gonna. When I get drunk and high, I'll, I'll, I'll come up with a lot better stories. So, uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I think you've done early. pretty good now. <laughs> what better way than Kane Hunter likes to fuck with me? So, yeah, he's he's a fucking he's a, he's a good dude though, man. Yeah, but uh, I I got him. I'm starting to think all these crazy contours. I'm like, oh god, they're never ending. So, um, <laughs> 
but it is, it's definitely something that it's for me, it's a, a life changing experiment that experience that I got to, um, really just meet, you know, people, even my friend, Jen, who we went to, you know, that we're going to meet out today. We were just at Bill Murray's. Um, she's with haunt scene. Um, she was on the show, um, that, that was on the other day. And, uh, she's like one of the hosts and like, just, I know her just meeting her at spooky, you know, and she's become a close friend, you know, and she, her, she hangs out with me and my wife and it's just cool how many relationships I had. And, you know, it, I'll tell you what though, the, some of the, uh, the vendors and stuff though, man, it's, it's crazy. It's, I guess it's any business you go to, but you know, being in the bar business, there's all these little clicks, but like, you know, so much beefs, and all mm-hmm. these, especially with cons, so many cons hate each other. Like booking agents hate each other, and it's like, man, it's it's too bad. It's like a lose lose situation for everyone. You know, I know I'm not going to pull up names right now, but I know, just say a big celebrity that won't do a show because him and the 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 owner beefed. But who does that help? First of all, all the fans are getting burned. You guys are both getting burned. And it's just, this is happens a lot and it frustrates me so much, you know? Exactly. Um, but here's my other pitch, my last pitch. Um, I also have Cameo. So anyone out there that likes me and after you watch Terrifier 2, I do $10 videos and I have like 20 to 30 videos up and I love doing them and I straight from the heart, man. The last one I did, you could just go to Cameo and look up my name or just type in Terrifier 2 and my name will come up. Also, Dave has one. And I just did one. Uh, the one that always sticks in my head was I did a Christmas time and I don't want to get emotional thinking someone try to fast go through it. Like <laughs> basically I was doing a video for a, a Merry Christmas to uh, a family's uh, kid. See, I don't even want to talk. Oh, I hate it. I don't even want to talk about it right now. But no, it was just regarding. I just went into detail because like uh, like my father's not in, in good health and it's like I couldn't be with him at Christmas with him and my mom. So it, it I basically like in the middle of the cameo, I, I just stopped. It like I kind of froze up when I was talking about my family. I was like, you know, be with your family and have a great Christmas. And and then I looked over at my wife. She was in the room when I was doing it, and she just like started tearing up. And I'm like, oh, oh fuck, what I get him? So I my shit is straight from the heart, man. Like you will never get a better cameo than fucking anyone. So I just for anybody in the future, man, I uh, I got you. So straight from the heart. You know. So. I- I gotta say, Rick, you, I'm, I'm listening to you, and I got that little voice in the back of my head, and I'm like, I want to do what this guy's doing because this is fucking so inspirational. Cool. What you I love do, it. so I can't thank you like enough for like sharing your stories, and you're so genuine, and I respect that so much like I I would love to talk to you again because you just you have such a positive vibe and that's something that we look for you know definitely cool cool I appreciate it really I do and I have a big heart and I just I did like I said I want to um you know I I could be a dick at times like (laughs) you know especially when I'm drinking just watch me on haunt scene but like um no truly though I you know I I I just try to think the best and you know life is so short man like you know (laughs) anytime you don't know what's time to go just you know be good to people and like I said inspirational and you know if listen you know maybe this whole thing maybe will lead you guys into doing something else if I was part of that then you know what I did my part you know to help you guys and vice versa how I'm getting inspired every single day you know I'm I'm inspired being on your show I love what you guys do I love you guys it's so it was so easy to talk to you guys like I said I know I talk like 90 percent of the time but so easy to talk to you guys and you laugh and you know I've done a lot of podcasts and it's like some of the people are dicks dude you know well, what I mean? and, and, and you know what, man? It, you're proof that the American dream still exactly. is alive. Yeah. Exactly. You know, if you, you believe yes. in yourself and you're not afraid to work your ass off, here you yes. are. And, you know, that's inspiring to everybody. Bro, I'm going to quote that. That's going to be, I'm going to put, I'm going to Facebook you guys with, uh, with your links and stuff. And I'm going to tell you, that's the fucking quote of the day, man. The American dream is still alive, man. Hey there, it's Quinn from Scarifier. You ever have one of those days where you're out on the lake and the sun's going down, gazing into the eyes of that special someone, and then you realize, I brought my machete, but no hockey mask. Well, if you're in a rush to make a killing, head over to 13X Studios and get your very own custom hockey mask. Mask creator Rick Stizinski takes a hands-on approach to every order to create the perfect mask to your specialized needs. 
Why would you settle for red triangles when you can shop an assortment of original styles and colors? Rick's clientele includes Nightmare Toys, Kevin Smith, and Kane Hottie. Head online to follow 13X Studio on all social media platforms. Then go over to 13X Studios on Etsy to put in your custom order today. Don't get caught with your mask off while devising your next decapitation. Go to 13xstudios.com. All right, that was our talk with Rick from 13X Studio. What a guy, right? Ah, so much fun. He's a great guy. If you guys get a chance to meet him at a con or anywhere else or head over to his website to get some of his products, please, please do so. He was a great guy, and he has such a great product out there. Very talented. Very genuine. All right. So next week, you may have noticed by his uh, absence, the ace is on hiatus. He's on vacation, if you will. So next week, it's just going to be the Gov and Quinn. Buckle up. And then we'll see you next week. In the meantime, remember to like, share, subscribe. Head over to our social media. Everything for Scarifier. See you next time. Scarifier.